Hello, um, this is Amanda Smithfield from Humefog Academic Magnet. Today I'm going to show you how to use Taxedo. And Taxedo is uh, one of the word clouds that exist. Um, so let's just get started. Now the, what I like to use Taxedo for is when I have a website uh, that has a lot of words on it. Um, and I um, don't want to copy and paste those words, I use Taxedo. So let me give you an example. You want to pick a nice clean website. So notice this website of Avello. I don't have ads here. It's nice and clean. There's not a bunch of um, superfluous stuff. So I'm going to use this website as my source for my word cloud. Uh, so I'm going to do a word cloud on Othello. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the website address. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go over here and then to paste it where it says URL. Now right now I'm not doing anything with this. I'm just going to hit submit because I'm going to show you some things later on. Okay, so right now it's creating my um, word cloud. There it is. Um, so let me show you the different things that you can do with it. First thing, I can, you know, kind of change color um, of things. Uh, I can go here to theme. I can pick a certain theme of uh, work, kind of colors that kind of go together. I can change my font. So notice it's changing my font. Uh, I can change my orientation. So right now it's kind of more vertical. I can make it um, more. Um, I can make it more vertical, more horizontal. Um, I can also uh, so layout and all kind of kind of goes back. Um, doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, but it just kind of gives some other options. Uh, keeps kind of moving things around, so you can play around with that. Uh, one of the most powerful things about Taxedo is that you can actually put things in different shapes. So you can take the words and put them in different shapes. And while some of them may not be as appropriate for high school, they can be more elementary-ish, it could be appropriate for a um, beginning foreign language class or, you know, there would be certain situations that you might find it appropriate. So right now I'm just going to use this as a... Um, uh, you know, you see that there are many different designs here. Right now, what I'm going to use, I'm trying to pick something appropriate here. So I'm going to try um, a, uh, I'm just going to use a, a, a speech bubble here, a call out. So I'm going to click on that. Yeah, just it made it kind of look like a speech bubble. Um, so I changed the shape. I could try many other shapes. Um, the next thing, and this is one of the more important things to know, is that there are, you know, so you have this layout, but there is a lot of flexibility here. So if I, this is a very important part it, where it says Word Layout Options. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on Word, and you notice right now I have no punctuation showing, but I could change that. So if I'm in Spanish with, uh, with the accent marks, I can change that to yes. Um, you notice right now it's not showing numbers, but that might be something I want to change. Um, you know, I can, um, I can, uh, you know, change. Uh, right now it's set to combine identical words. I can change that. Um, so right now I'm going to keep everything the same, but you could change some of these things if you need to. The next part is layout, and you kind of notice, you know, there's, uh, you know, a bunch of things you can play around with. One of the most common ones is hard boundary. And a hard boundary, you notice here that there's some words that kind of stick out. So you, you can tell it's a call out, but it's not a very firm border. But I can make that uh, more firm. So if I want to, so I'm going to make it a, a firm boundary. And whenever you change something and you want it to, to you want it to change on the page, you do have to hit accept. And you'll notice that it kind of reloads there. So now it's kind of, if you notice, it's it's much closer together as far as your edges are closer. Okay. Well, let's go back to Word layout options here. And uh, skip is a very powerful 
uh, tool because uh, right now I can pick certain words to skip. So let's say I want to uh, skip these names because I really want the focus to be on not the names as much but as on what's really going on. So I'm going to click accept and you'll notice that those names disappear. Um, and so then I can, uh, you know, I can change things that way just by taking out words. And the last one is advanced, and that's just more about dealing with the background color. You know, if I wanted to do that, um, if I wanted to change that. So, um, anyway, that's Tagzito. Now, once you're done, uh, you will need to save it uh, or print it. So to do that, you're going to go right up here where it says Save, Share, Print. And um, right now, I want to save an image. Now, at school, I recommend you don't want to use something really big. Just 125 or 250 uh, K JPEG would be fine. I'm going to pick the 250. I'm going to click on it, and then it's going to ask me where to put it at. So, And usually, a good place to have it at is Pictures. Because uh, that kind of makes sense, because it really is a picture, right? So I might call this a fellow Tagzito. And then I hit save. And then if I go over here to my um, to my documents file, uh, I can see in my pictures, I should be able to scroll down here and kind of see that. Let's see here, right there. I can do, uh, open that up. You're seeing lots of things that are on my uh, picture file right now. So that's a picture of me in New York. So, come on. Alright, so there we go. And it opens up in, uh, this one opened up in Photo Viewer. And that's it. That's how you use Tagzito.